Hey everybody, this is Tom, otherwise known as Scary Spikes, and welcome to another, albeit slightly different, Star Citizen video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to get started with your T16000M HOTUS system, uh, whether that is the full system, the standard system, or the dual stick. Notice that we will be predominantly focusing on the standard system, although there will be documentation linked to the other systems as well, so that you can set them up with no problems. Before we get started, please make sure that you join us on stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 8 p.m. on Twitch, as well as our amazing Discord community. Links for both of those will be found in the description below. Without further ado, let's get started with this video. So the very first thing that will happen when you plug in your HOTUS system into your Windows 10 computer is that it will automatically download the drivers requiring for it to work. That being said, I would still very much recommend you going over to the Thrustmaster website and download their drivers found there. If it's the same one, it's not a problem. It's just I want to make sure that my peripherals are working correctly. And sometimes you can have limited functionality with generic drivers. So we're going to go ahead and click on this HOTUS system right here. And then you'll just need to scroll down to where it says drivers. And then you'll have only one option available. Go ahead and click the red download button there. And depending on where your downloads are, you want to go to that folder, open it up and install it. Just follow the on-screen instructions. It's relatively easy. Then moving forward, what you'll need to do is download the software. Best way to do that is to click on the software tab here. Go all the way to the bottom where it says target. And again, download the target software by clicking this button here, installing it from your downloads folder, and then you'll be ready for the next step. Additionally, what you can also do is you can go ahead and get yourself the game settings file for your HOTA system for Star Citizen. In order to do that, what you'll need to do is go over to game settings. Once you've expanded the game settings section here, you'll want to scroll down beyond the mapping examples to where it says target profile and pick the right profile that's right for you and your system, as well as the game that you're playing. Of course, again, that will be Star Citizen. So the very first one that you'll see is this one here. This is the target profile T16000M Star Citizen 1. This is the one that you would want to download if you're using the regular uh, or the full system. And then if you want to use your dual stick system, you'll want to download this one here that says T16000M Duo Star Citizen. Once you have those downloaded, you'll be ready for the next step. Okay, so once you've got the right profile and the drivers and software downloaded, you want to make sure that the drivers are installed first, the software second, and then follow the steps in this uh, section of the video here. Go ahead and start the target software. Okay, and once the target software is live, you should be able to see your stick as well as your throttle system here. Uh, if you don't see these, you just want to make sure that you have them properly connected and that you've got the driver installed. You also might want to make sure that you restart your computer after installing any drivers or software to make sure that it is installed correctly. Now, the next part is going to be a little bit different based on what you have chosen to do, whether you're going to use your full system, the standard system, or the dual stick system. What I would recommend, though, is for the dual stick system, follow the instructions in the PDF that are included in the download that comes with the profile that you downloaded earlier, as it will have dual stick specific instructions for you to follow. Since we're not using dual sticks here, we're going to be focusing on the standard system and this is going to be quite a bit easier or at least less time consuming. So the first thing that you'll need to do is just click on this button over here. And that's going to open up a folder where you're going to be looking for the profile that you recently downloaded. So in my case, it's in downloads and it's in this folder here. And then you'll see this file right here. And you'll want to go ahead and double click on that. And what you'll notice is it'll start to load a few things here. And it's what it's basically doing is it's combining your throttle and your stick into one cohesive unit. I'm not really quite sure why this is something that's required, but in any case, this is something that you do need to do for it to function properly. Now, when you see this here at the bottom, that means you've done this correctly, but make sure that you always see this and leave this window running when you play the game. You only want to click on end when you are finished running your game and you are ready to close everything down for the night. That being said, you can always click on this first button here and this will open up another uh, sort of screen where you can actually test all of your inputs. 
So this is a great way to make sure that everything works the way that you want it to. You can move around all of your different axes. And as you see there, everything is moving around. Got all of our buttons, as well as our hat, our rudder, and all of the different buttons, as well as the actual throttle axes on the throttle quadrant. What you can do as well, is you can open up the event viewer. And make sure that when you're pressing all the different buttons, that they are registering here. Okay, if the buttons that you're pressing are not registering here, then you have an issue and you need to go back and make sure that you've completed the steps previously correctly in order for this to work. Once you see that you have these buttons registering perfectly, uh, then you are ready to go and you can go ahead and start Star Citizen. See you in the game. Okay, so once you're inside of Star Citizen, this is pretty much the easy, though a bit laborious part. You'll want to go into your options menu down here, go over to key bindings here, down on the right hand corner at the bottom of the screen here, you'll want to move this over to joystick slash HOTUS. Now, this is a picture of the Logitech 3D Pro, so if you have that, this actually makes it quite easy. It's a very common joystick and a very affordable one at that, but we are using a HOTUS, and they don't seem to have a diagram for the HOTUS at the moment, so that's absolutely fine. What you want to go ahead and do is click on Advanced Controls uh, over here, and you'll notice that you have a bunch of different categories, which you can click on, and you see that I've already got everything set. Now, I'm not going to do this, but I'm just going to show you what you should be doing when you're configuring everything for the very first time, because otherwise you could have uh, conflicts and other issues to work around, and those are never fun. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to go ahead and click on this button down here, and then you want to go reset to defaults, or actually, I'm sorry, uh, you want to click on clear all device bindings. When you click on this, it's going to give you a list. So you don't want to clear the keyboard or the mouse or the gamepad, unless you're using the gamepad, uh, but this is just for the HOTUS, so we're just going to focus on that. So what you want to do is for the joystick, you want to select joystick. For the second joystick, you want to scroll down and select joystick one. And for the last joystick, you want to scroll down and select joystick two. Then click on the load button. I'm not going to do this because it's going to clear all of my settings, but when you click the load button, what this will basically do is it will get rid of each and every single binding that you have here that could be attached to your throttle quadrant or your flight stick and any of the buttons that are attached to them. Okay, and again, that's important to do because you don't want to create any conflicts between buttons, even though it will tell you, but unlike DCS, it will not actually remove the previous binding. Okay, so it's possible to have the same button for two bindings, and that's why it's important to clear all of your bindings before you get started here. Of course, you want to get started with things as simply as possible, and the best way to do that is to start in flight cockpit. I've got a button set for eject and self-destruct, but you don't really need to do that unless that's something that's important to you. Uh, additionally, I do have something set to my emergency seat exit. This is again just a preference for me, but you don't really need these, especially if you're not doing a whole lot of combat flying. One thing that I would definitely recommend is for you to set up your flight slash system ready uh, button. This is basically going to make your ship flight ready, which is the equivalent of pressing R on your keyboard. So this is always a good thing to have. Then I also have a button to open all doors, close all doors and lock all doors. And that's pretty much it. Don't worry about ship and weapon and shield power. That's something that you can have a look at later on. Now, the uh, view section, I don't really have a whole lot going on other than just to cycle the camera view, but you can set this up to your liking. The movement is really what's going to be the most important. So this is really what you want to focus on to begin with to make sure that you can at least have basic movement in the game. So your pitch will control the nose of your ship going up or down. The yaw will control the nose of your ship pointing to the left or to the right. The roll will control whether your ship is banking to the left or to the right. And the strafe up and down will allow you to move straight up the same way as if you were to push the space bar and down as if you were to push the control button. The strafe left and right would be pretty much the same as you moving uh, with the A and D keys. I believe those are the default keys to strafe left and right. That's just to move you uh, directly to the left or directly to the right, just as if you were strafing as if in first person. 
Throttle forward. Okay, so this is really interesting. So if you see here, we have an option that asks you for an input, uh, most specifically an axis, which is, you know, an, an, a bi-directional input for throttle forward and back. Okay, you do not want to set this up unless you want to fly your ship in the style that you can do so in Elite Dangerous by default, which is that if your throttle quadrant is in the middle, that's when you're actually at the neutral. The top half of your throttle quadrant is for forward movement and the bottom half of your throttle quadrant is then for uh, the backwards movement. If you want to, uh, you can set it up the way that I do, which is, you know, basically I always almost always move forward uh, and I do have a button that I can use to move backward if I need to. But for my throttle quadrant, I usually have just the uh, throttle forward set to my uh, Z axis on my throttle quadrant. So that is the actual throttle going forward and back. And what that will do is it will change the amount of throttle that you have from zero to 100 based on the position of your throttle on your throttle quadrant. All right, then we also have the afterburner. That's a pretty important one. So go ahead and set that to whatever's comfortable. And speed limiter absolute. So this is actually really cool. So what this does is it does the same thing as your mouse wheel does in the keyboard and mouse commands, whereby it limits the amount of speed that your ship can go. Now, other people have uh, the different sliders set to uh, different types of controls, like the acceleration control. You can do that as well. It basically just changes how fast or slowly your ship accelerates. But what I really like is that if I use my slider, which is basically on the uh, T16000M HOTUS, on the throttle quadrant on the left, you have a little dial under your pinky. Okay, um, that is uh, on the left side of the actual throttle that you move up and down or forward and backward in this case. Right. So that's the slider that I use. That's basically just like a little knob that I twist with my pinky to either increase my possible maximum speed or decrease my possible maximum speed. And what that does is even if I have my throttle at 100 percent, but I have my speed limiter set to 50 percent, it's only going to give me 100 percent of that range, which is 50 percent of total speed, which is really nice. So that will really help to give you finite control over your ship. And I would definitely recommend using this over the acceleration limiter. If you have an X56 HOTUS or something with a few more dials, then the acceleration is also nice to have. All right, moving forward, the other crucial command here uh, or keybind is going to be your space brake. I do have that set to a button on my throttle quadrant. And again, very important to have this unless you're really, really good at doing a 180 and going full speed with afterburner in the opposite direction. But I'm an absolute noob and I like my space brake, even though it doesn't always work the way I intend to when I usually pancake against asteroids. But that's uh, that's another video. OK, and uh, there's a few more controls here that we need to talk about and everything else you can pretty much set up to your heart's content or whatever you like. A lot of these controls will be preference, but the ones in movement are very crucial. So that's why I'm touching on these now. So landing gear toggle. This is to toggle your landing gear down and back up. Very important to have this as pretty much every ship has landing gear. So you're going to need to be using that and you'll be using it quite often. A flight VTOL, this is interesting for ships, things like the uh, Cutlass Black, for example, the Valkyrie, the C2 and M2 variants, and a number of other ships like the Terrapin and other ships in Star Citizen that have VTOL or vertical takeoff and landing thrusters. This is how you can enable and disable those thrusters. The uh, alternative for this would be K on the keyboard by default. Um, so if you have a ship with VTOL and you'd like to set that up, you can go ahead and do that right there. OK, and then finally, we have a quantum uh, drive toggle and quantum drive. Um, so basically what this means is you toggle your quantum drive on and off. And this I wish it tell, told you that it was actually a hold command um, because it doesn't seem to work actually without this. So you want to set this to the same button. This is what you press to enable your quantum drive. Once you're finished spooling and calibrating, then you hold it. And then this is what is uh, the hold that allows you to actually activate your quantum drive. So I wish this was a little bit more intuitive, but nevertheless, I digress. That is what it is. So the rest of these are relatively easy. Um, if you're looking for targeting, what's kind of interesting is targeting is not where you want to be to actually figure out how to lock or, or select your targets. That is going to be in target cycling. And I've simply just got it to uh, cycle lock in view forward. So that'll basically uh, cycle all of the targets in your view in your forward direction. Of course, you can set these up as you see fit. 
Uh, the other thing that I would really recommend if you are big into scanning or mining is to set up your keybinds to enable your scanning and mining modes. And uh, what's funny is that you can actually use similar keybinds to uh, firing. So for example, uh, here I have a keybind set and here I have a keybind set that would otherwise fire my weapons. Um, but in this case, it's uh, not going to fire my weapons because it won't do that if you're in mining or scanning mode. So that's kind of nice where you can duplicate your uh, keybinds. All right, uh, turret movement. I really wouldn't recommend using your HOTUS for turret movement unless it's something you really want. I find that it's something that usually requires very quick, agile, and very pinpoint precision control. And I still prefer using my mouse for that. And that's just a personal choice of mine. All right, and then we're gonna move on. I would recommend going to flight power. Okay, and then you want to make sure that flight uh, power or toggle power all that is you on the keyboard. That's what uh, toggles all the power to all of your ship systems. Okay, and then the thrusters. So what's nice is that the thrusters is basically the I on the keyboard and the uh, toggle power all is the U on the keyboard. This is nice to have because sometimes when you land, you don't want to power your ship off as seen in one of my previous guides, but you do want to turn off your thrusters just in case you have inclement weather and the weather can actually uh, flip your ship and do a bunch of damage if you have your thrusters on because your thrusters are still outputting power despite the fact that you are not moving because of course you're on the ground. So make sure to go ahead and set those up as well. Um, everything else I pretty much left alone with the exception of um, uh, weapons and missiles and things like that. So for missiles, um, I basically have uh, cycle my missiles forward. So this is what I had set up previously to, I, I believe, one of the buttons on my keyboard. I believe it was home or page up or something like that. Um, so this is just if you have a ship that has multiple missile types, like the Harbinger, for example. This will just allow you to cycle through all your missiles. You can go cycle missiles backwards, and then that way you don't have to go through all of your missiles to get to the one before it, if that makes sense. Um, but honestly, I usually don't run any more than two types of missiles, so this usually works for me. Also, uh, you want to get these set up as well. So this one, acquire missile lock tap and launch missile hold. So again, this can be exactly the same button and it would work exactly the same way as the middle mouse button on the keyboard and mouse configuration. So uh, I've got this set up to one of the buttons on the top of my HOTUS on my stick and I just simply tap this button to get a missile lock and once I've got my missile lock, I can hold the same button to fire. Everything else is pretty straightforward, so if you do have any questions, please let me know. Uh, and there's only one more thing that I want to go over, and that is saving everything so that you do not get uh, or fall victim, rather, to having to lose all your bindings and doing all this again, because this will take you some time to do, okay? So this is how you're going to save everything. Make sure that you have backups so that just in case this does happen to you, you can always get this from the backup and you'll be good to go. You'll never have to rebind your keys again unless you want to change what they do. So down here, what you want to do is go ahead and click on this and then simply save uh, control settings. You can name it whatever you like. Uh, I've already done that. Uh, so as you can see here, I have mine named uh, T16,000M HOTUS. Okay, so what happened in this previous patch when we got a hotfix is that um, basically I lost all my keybinds, of course, because I knew that was going to happen. Thankfully, I've saved them here. Um, and uh, all you need to do is when you click on this, you simply just go to the joystick section again and you do exactly the same thing as we did before to clear your binds, okay? So joystick, 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 joystick one, joystick, joystick two, load, and you're good to go, okay? Easy as that, and uh, if you want to even go a step further, you want to go to your Star Citizen folder into the live environment or the live folder and just back up your user folder because this will actually show up in the control section of your user folder. And once you've done that, you will never ever have to worry about your keybinds again. So guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. Uh, if it was, please let me know by leaving a like. Of course, subscribe if you're new and ring that bell so that you don't miss future videos. Again, please make sure to join us Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Twitch. We'd love to see you there as well as our amazing Discord community. The links for both of those can be found in the description below. And of course, come by sspgaming.com. We've always got some new stuff coming in. And of course, it is handmade merch, specially made just for you. You help to support me and you get some really cool stuff in return. So again, guys, thank you so very much for watching. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. I'm glad this uh, was helpful to you if it was. And uh, make sure to leave your tips, tricks and whatnot and questions in the comments section below. Well, until then, I'll see you in the verse and in Discord. Uh, I'll hope to see you also in the next video. Bye for now.